And we've noticed this in particular, this trend that when black women, <coughs> black girls go missing, A, mm -hmm. there's no coverage. And B, if there is, it has to be a certain kind of black girl that's deemed respectable yes. um, in certain people's eyes. Um, what can you talk to me about what Finding Tamika is? Sure. Finding Tamika is an audible original. It's a series. Um, it was produced by Kevin Hart and Charlemagne the God, SBH Productions and Color Farm Media and Molten Hart, James T. Green, our executive producer, co-writer with me and also uh, in charge of our whole sonic and sound audio team. Um, Finding Tamika is about Tamika Houston. Tamika Houston is, uh, went missing in 2004, just shy of her 25th birthday. She was from Spartanburg, South Carolina. And uh, she became the poster child for why black women and girls were not being held up or looked for. And going back to Gwen Ifill, the, the great Gwen Ifill's uh, missing white woman syndrome, mm -hmm. her aunt, Rebecca Howard, ha was a PR specialist. And her husband is Desmond Howard, the great Heisman Trophy winner. And they could not get national attention for Tamika Houston. And Rebecca started asking, why is that? And she knew a mutual friend of ours, David Person. And David Person had, we had done a, a, um, an event together about uh, black women who were raped in Alabama a couple of years before. And he called me and said, hey, Erica, do you ever think you'd want to work in the audio space? And I said, yeah, what are, you, what are you working on? And he told me about uh, Rebecca and uh, Tamika. And we started talking. Ben Arnon is my partner at Color Farm. And the next thing you know, we were on the road trying to set up and eventually set up um, at Audible, finding Tamika. Mm -hmm. Now, what made you, I know you've been getting, you've been more involved with, you know, issues concerning women and and things of that nature, kind of getting more into activism and advocacy. What, it, what inspired you to get involved with this particular story? What drew you to it? David Person, who was a journalist originally, he was always in the black female space. Um, he reported on Tamika when she went missing initially for USA Today um, as an independent journalist. And I thought, that he was a smart man. I, I liked uh, where his politics were, the events he had, he had the event he had invited me to I, uh, was wonderful. And I, I always like trying to give my time and energy to things that everyone would say no to, because I feel like um, those are the people that need the most support. And um, they're often the people who ask me and I try to go where I'm invited, especially if it's possible. So why finding Tamika, why Tamika Houston? When you hear the details of her story, you think, this is crazy. It's horrific. It's awful when anyone goes missing. But what's amazing is that if you're telling me a, somebody specialized in PR can't get proper you know, um, you know, coverage, then that means no one can if you're Black, female. And don't be Black, Latino, or poor. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is, um, is unacceptable. So it might be a good place to start. That, that was something I found amazing just working with you know publicists so they have the context they have access to media and to find out that this story wasn't whatever it needed to be for somebody to take interest in it you mentioned in the opening of the uh, audible series that black girls and black women don't have to go missing to be invisible what did you yes. mean by that when you said that we don't see them when they're here. We have no idea who they are. We have a set of characteristics that we give over to black women. Ooh, that person's sassy. Ooh, that person's strong. Is she, oh, look at her, she's, all this stuff. Um, you never really use, see them using, a, ooh, she's vulnerable. Look at how delicate and wonderful. Or have you talked to her? She's got wonderful ideas. Uh-uh. All those things that we put on the mythological blonde haired blue eyed woman, girl, are absent from the conversation. And that's TLC to me, tender love and care and empathy. We can't just be these things that we've had to be over the years to survive slavery and rape um, and um, everything that we've had to, to do to 
thrive, which is um, be overeducated. <laughs> when I say overeducated, you know, yeah. be the most educated, vote the most, um, all these things that we over index on. Yeah. Why can't we be the person that the face that launches thousand ships? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In mythological terms and story terms, we're not those things. And we should be in more than just the movies we make about ourselves. So I, that to me is important. That Tamika needed to be seen. Her life needed to be seen, not just her murder, not just her, uh, the trauma, but also we needed to talk to the people who knew her best and they needed to tell their intimate story, not just be a feature in a larger context of a documentary about missing people or those things, which is great by the way, but in the audio space, they have time to tell it. And so we get to know them. I also, you really kind of put on your journalist hat as you're going, you know, down to the town and speaking. I really love the conversations that you have with her best friend that she grew up with that really, like you said, painted this human picture that wasn't perfect. And quite frankly, she reminded me of myself at that age, you know, moving and thinking, you know, certain Mm -hmm. things. So to, to see that sometimes that is used as a justification not to care or not to bring attention to that's something that happens with us in in black and missing cases but also in you know instances of rape we have to fit a certain ideal for people to care and even then they may not why do you think that is because if you don't, they won't look for you at all. If you look like a human being that has flaws, they'll say you, you're you the cause of it. If they, if you see that when black men get shot, they always take the worst picture of the person. They could have graduated, had degrees, everything. They'll show them being for coursing around their friends, doing all this mess or mm-hmm. looking like a thug um, because that sells and in, in, in feeds into the narrative. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a shame, but I was thinking about starting a company where everybody could take a picture just in case it would be called. Okay, <laughs> right. But, Put this in the file just in case. Use this, one. <laughs> use this one. Use all that. But you could create a file that could float on the internet about you and be in space. And it, it's a damn shame. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of what Black women do um, naturally when they're having fun are the worst pictures you want to put up. Mm-hmm. And um, they're not going to look for that person. They're going to say that person's a whore. That person uh, was out there asking for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we need to make sure that they know that that person is educated, often that person, but even if they're not, by the way, they don't need to fit your, your bill. Every person deserves to be looked for. There's no doubt. We're not saying other people don't, but they shouldn't have to fit within your parameters to get the, um, the type of attention that, they, that any human deserves. Yeah, to be seen as human, to be seen as human, as somebody's family member that's not that's missing the same amount of care. As you were, you know, traveling and researching and investigating, what were some of the things that struck you the most as you were putting this together and telling this story? Well, I tell you, Danielle, I think I wanted, I said, I could be a journalist. I love this. You were good. You were asking the right questions too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You know, that was me being a wannabe, but I, I saw, uh, I got the rush of adrenaline when it comes to talking to people and feeling that if they trust you enough, they'll let you into your life. And that is such an honored space, sacred. And I just really enjoy talking to people normally, but also intentionally having a conversation that we all know what we're, what, 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 you know, what the subject is. And um, that exploration was great. Uh, The other thing is um, I learned so much about myself and uh, my fear of, of getting it wrong. Um, The trembling that came over me after I talked to her aunts, when I realized the pain and, that I don't know, just everything that they were carrying all this year, the suffering. Yeah. And I was frightened. I was frightened of Tamika. I was frightened of her ghost. I was frightened of everything, anything that, I don't know. I can't even tell you what I was frightened of. All I know is I got some crystals around my neck when I got back to Brooklyn and called Reverend Barber, William Barber, who has been my friend, but also he counseled me. I'm not a big religious person, although my father was a pastor, um, preacher, church of God in Christ, all of those things. I've I just, uh, I have to say, I wasn't prepared for it emotionally. And I just said, uh, Erica, this is going to be much more traumatic and a harder thing than you thought. 
Absolutely. And I can attest to that as the journalist, the importance mm. of <clears throat> taking care of yourself when you're covering trauma. And especially over the past couple of years, Ooh. one of the things that I, I really ah. appreciate about this story is that it was Black media that helped to bring this, this story out to bring this family some sort of closure. Can you talk about yes. the importance of Black media when it comes to doing what mainstream media won't do when it comes to highlighting and, and getting the word out about these stories? Black media is everything. If it weren't for you all and for them, then uh, Tamika wouldn't even be we wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't be having this conversation about many of the uh, great icons in our um, community that helped change not only uh, the world, I mean, America, but the world. Yeah. Black media covered it. Um, we think about what Ida B. Wells means and um, the, the legacy of what she did and how brave she was. When people tell you that, you go, oh, I didn't know that was a problem. And you realize, wow, if you're carrying that story and you tell a truth about something that's underground, you, you also make yourself a target. Yeah. And so all of my great thanks and um, admiration go to people who are willing to go into the belly of the beast mm -hmm. and bring it out alive. And the belly of the beast is race politics, is um, the systemic uh, bias and ugliness and evil that permeates America, not on the fringe, mm -hmm. but right in the core. And, uh, which out Ricky Smiley and Tom Joyner, uh, Rebecca Howard, who's a PR specialist, and that's Tamika's aunt. Yeah. When she said Black media covered it as often as they could, they were first, but it wasn't enough then. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. They needed national coverage and they needed national coverage to eyes that, and ears that they didn't have access to. Can you, how, how is the family now? I, I did see an interview with Rebecca Howard and just in talking about the the launch of this i could still feel the heaviness how is Ooh. the family they've suffered so many so much mm -hmm. that um i don't know if i can adequately speak to it i know rebecca every time we had our conversation her breathing would change i am um, in the the audible series you'll hear me trying to counsel her a little bit, say, Re Rebecca, breathe. Because I didn't think she'd like how she'd come off because she was uh, starting. And I said, this is a PR specialist. So she knows that, you know, and it, and I said, Rebecca, let's stop, just breathe. And you hear her, but every time it was like lifting. And this is the woman who carried this story and also was the family spokesperson mm -hmm. for the family. So, I just think that she's five foot one, Tamika was four foot 11, tiny, all those wonderful things. That, again, I said those characteristics they say about black women, she is. But I also asked her, did she get any therapy? She said, no, I asked Zelda, did you get any therapy? She said, no, I asked Terrence, no. None of them have had therapy, none of them, not Gabrielle, her mother. And I thought, this is a shame. Yeah. We should get together and say, here it is. There should be a black therapist or a few of them say, I offer my services. Yeah. We need to help people like this, not only get through it, but live their lives and return back to themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I could feel that in, in just watching her, her disposition. And you know, mm. I'm a mother too, so I, I just, Ooh. it's very difficult not to relate. You know, as a, as a woman, as a Black woman, you've always been made aware of the fact of the dangers that um, present to you and the fact that if you go missing, somebody may not care enough to put a spotlight on it to look for you. Um, what can black people who, what are resources that we can support or help to, to keep the awareness? I saw the stats that say 30% of yes. missing people are, are black, but only 4% get any kind of real coverage, which I think is just mind blowing. So what can, what can black people do who, who want to keep bringing awareness and visibility more than anything to these cases? 
We have a lot of power now that we, she didn't have then. The internet exists. We have our own platforms. We should start using them together. I've been asking people to hashtag find her. And I've asked them to list or tell their story about their missing loved one or person they know that didn't get the type of coverage or um, visibility. And that I would start to say their name and keep them um, uh, you know, out front. But also um, there's the Black and Missing Foundation. Uh, the, a woman who lived in Spartanburg, um, South Carolina, started this after Tamika's case. She said she was young then when that happened and it haunted her and she ended up growing up and um, being a PR specialist and with her cousin, who's a law enforcement um, expert, they got together and made the Black and Missing Foundation. You should go there if you know someone who's missing, if you know someone, um, you can put their name in, you can put the application. They also teach you how to navigate the media and also law enforcement mm. and the authorities, because a lot of people think we come black people, we come with so much burden. We all, we think that law enforcement is, a, is against us, which right. a lot of the times yeah. that I can see how that's the case. But in this, in this uh, situation, they're supposed to be the first people you have to interface with. Mm. And um, you can't, you have, to, who can be the spokesperson that can speak for the family who's able to manage those emotions that are definitely heightened, but also be able to know that they need these people to work for them and, um, and over a long period of time. Because as Rebecca puts it, there are people who are murdered and there are people who are dealing, you know, dealing with stuff that they can see. A missing person, they don't see. So they're like, you know what? A murder goes up here and a missing person, you know, could be a runaway, could be all these things they say it could be. Mm -hmm. But in order to keep it top of mind and priority, how you interface with them matters, especially with the local press, people who know, people who can write stories. So suddenly that enters the zeitgeist and people can see that it's being written uh, about by uh, people who are willing to do the work and more importantly, have a, a larger platform or often uh, closest to you. And so you need to go and ask them if they'll do a story and, and highlight and what do they need, get pictures ready, everything. So those things we can do, we can get ready to use our platforms and definitely locally be ready to interface with the authorities. As audiences listen to this, what are you hoping that they take away from this? Well, finding Tamika is a warning for us all that if we miss her, meaning we don't find her, we're lost. We're supposed to be an empire, the only empire left, a so-called first world nation. And if you cannot take care of your most vulnerable people, you're doomed. You're already destroyed. You just don't know it. And um, I hope they take this warning and, and change their lives and start to support, fund, and see Black women and girls. Yeah, as human. As human, as the damsels, as this, the, you know, yeah. as the wonder women that we are, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I appreciate Thank you talking to the Chicago Defender so much. Thank you so much. And a lot of shout out to the women, Black women who've been in different um, legislation and representative passing first in nation laws that um, are helping Black women and girls get found. They are out there. And so shout out to them. Absolutely. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, Danielle. We'll talk. See you Take soon. Care.